Hi there, in this series of videos, we're gonna talk about the normal model and finding probabilities. Okay, so now we've done so much work with simulation and we've done uh, sampling distributions, we've done confidence intervals with bootstrap distributions, we've done hypothesis testing with randomization distributions. Now to compare that, we're gonna look and actually look at some of the theoretical methods, okay? Not for all of the tests we've done, but for some of the tests we've done, okay? So today, or right now in this series, we're gonna talk about the normal model. We've seen this unimodal symmetric bell-shaped curve many times. It's come up in just about all of our simulations, right? As long as certain conditions were met, so we'll talk about what those specifically those conditions are. But in this, um, in this module, in this section, we're gonna learn about the theoretical normal model, okay? And we're gonna use it to find theoretical probabilities. Okay, so this is the basis for all the theoretical confidence intervals that we're gonna do and the theoretical hypothesis tests, okay? We've said like things like approximate p-value and that's because it's based on a simulation. Now we'll be finding, you know, exact, but due to the theory, but you know, still, it's still, everything's still an approximation in statistics, right? Okay, so I thought you might be interested to see the actual equation for it. So I've got that in just a minute, but first I wanna talk about the notation. So this is how statisticians define a model. So they put the variable first, we, we're, I'm gonna include all of us, we put the variable first, and then the a tilde, or um, I, don't, I guess I don't know another name for it. It's a, like a squiggly line. Um, then we put the name of the distribution or the first letter. So in this case is normal, N for normal. And then we put our inputs. And different distributions have different, can have different numbers of inputs. Like the normal happens to have two, but not all of them have two. So our inputs to the normal are the mean and the standard deviation. And we always put the mean first and the standard deviation second because the, if we reverse them, that would be a totally different distribution. Okay, so let me just write, this is normal, N for normal, which is the name. N also stands for name, but <laughs> or it's the first letter of name. So the X is our variable, so that might change. That could be a... Um, that could be a p or a p hat. So this is our um, variable. Then we have is distributed as, the little squiggly line or tilde is distributed as normal with our inputs, okay? So every time we start a new model, we wanna write that statement. That's the definition statement. That's part of showing your work is what model are you using? Okay, so write out a definition statement, which is that boxed thing, for each new model you use, okay? Okay, and then here, if you're curious, this is the formula for a normal curve. So if you were to put this into a graphing um, utility, any like desmos.com or a graphing calculator, you would see that bell-shaped curve. So isn't this interesting? Um, it's very complicated, of course. It's an exponential. And you'll notice, you know, the inputs are the mean and the standard deviation. So you might even recognize there's a z-score in there, the x minus the mean over the standard deviation. There's a z-score in there. So um, this might be, well, I don't think it's the standard normal because it's whatever mean, mean and standard deviation are there. Anyway, we're not going to use that because uh, it would also involve calculus, like finding the area under a curve. So we're not going to do that. There's plenty of online calculators that will calculate these for us. And I'm going to show you one at staplet.com because we've used staplet quite a bit earlier in the course. Okay, so we won't be doing any of these by hand. And also, please do not use tables. Um, back in the day, uh, if you haven't seen one, there would be a table in the back of the book that we would have to go to the back of the book. And that's because, you know, you couldn't have a table for every single mean, every single mean and every single standard deviation. So they would first they would have to find the z-score. So it's more work. You have to um, put something in terms of a z-score, find your probability in the table, and then you have to put it back, um, like undo the z-score. So 
please don't do that method. If you're getting any help from tutors, uh, please show them how we're doing it so they can help you in that method. So I'm just going to put a note for that, please. Use an online app. Not tables. Okay. Even you can use a TI calculator if you have one. Don't buy one, but if you have one, you can use it for that as well. They will do those for you. Okay, so let's first just see how we're defining this, and then uh, we'll go to Staplet. Okay, so here's an example. The mean annual rainfall in Portland is approximately normally distributed, as all measurements are, with a mean of 40 inches and a standard deviation of 8 inches round to the nearest inch. Okay, so I did look up the mean. It is about 40 inches. It was really hard to find any kind of standard deviation. So that is an estimate. Um, so here's what a question you might see. Define, draw, and label the normal distribution model for this situation. Okay, if you're typing, you can always, you don't have to draw it by hand. If you're typing, you can always copy paste from an app such as Staplet an applet like staplet. Um, okay, so the define part, remember that's what I was talking about in the green box above here. So let me write that out. X is distributed as normal, parentheses. We want to put in our mean and then our standard deviation. So 40 comma 8. So that's our definition statement. And then I have a pre-printed normal curve on here. I do just want to fill in because I didn't have enough room uh, up above to say that the tilde or the the squiggly line is is pronounced or is, is spoken um, is distributed as something to that effect distributed as normal from uh, with a mean of 40 inches and a standard deviation of eight inches okay so as you've seen before, we always have the, the means in the middle because it's symmetric. So I'm going to put my 40, I mean a 40, in the center. And then on this normal curve that I have pre-printed, I have the mean in the middle, and then I have one, two, three little tick marks on the axis uh, going to the right, and I have one, two, three going to the left. Okay, so I'm going to label, and then we use our standard deviation as our scale. So I'm going to add 8 each time, and then I'm going to subtract 8 each time. So let's go up from 40. 40 plus 8, enter. I'm just going to do plus 8, enter, plus 8, enter. So that is a fast way to get all three of those, but you can do them individually if you prefer. So 48, then 8 more is 56, and 8 more is 64. Okay, so 48, oops, 48, I almost tried to skip that one. That's 48, 56, 64. Similarly, I can go down from 40. 40 minus 8, enter, minus 8, enter, minus 8, enter. So I'm going down by 8, so 32, 24, and 16. Okay, and we saw before that this goes, the reason we do this, we only go three on each side, is we learned before that 68% of the values fall within one standard deviation, and then 95, uh, sorry, not, yeah, 95% of the values fall within two standard deviations, and 99.7 fall within three standard deviations. So there's a tiny bit on either side outside of three, but not very much. So we usually just... Uh, write it to three standard deviations. And if you've heard of the name Six Sigma, which is a statistical training, that's where they're getting their Six Sigma from because that's three on the three below and three above. And that would be like, like a whole tolerance of Six Sigma. Okay, so that's the define, draw, and we're working on the labeling part. We have our scale, but we haven't said anything about what this context is or what the variable is, okay? So we need both. We want to put the uh, variable as rainfall in inches. So we, we need the variable and the units. 
And then we also want to talk about Portland because that's the context, right? So you could do that. It varies how you could do that. You could make a title up above Portland rainfall and then the variable below, or you could put it all below. It's up to you. I'm just going to put it all below. I'm going to say Portland rainfall. in inches. Okay, but that variable and units are very important and then any additional context we have. Okay, so that is our theoretical normal distribution. Now we're going to find some probabilities. Oops, sorry, I've got an issue moving my paper up here. Okay, so using an online normal calculator Write a probability statement and find the probability that the mean annual rainfall is. Then we have between 30 to 50 inches, less than 22 inches, and we have a greater than as well. Okay, so we're going to write a probability statement. That part's not using the calculator. It's, I should put that part first. So I'm going to write the probability statement. Um, you'll get practiced at this, but let me show you how to do a between. Um, between is where you put the number, the smaller number, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to the larger number. And I think Staplet will use this notation, so you can also just copy it from Staplet. This says x is between 30 and 50, okay? And we put a probability, this capital P is for probability, and then we put our uh, event, the thing we're looking for, in parentheses, okay? And then when we get the number for our probability, that goes outside the parentheses. Okay, so let's go over to Staplet. And I went to the main page, because I know you've been here before and you've seen this, so I want to show you where it is. But then I also will give you the, the direct link. So we've been in data analysis, but now we're going into probability. And you can see there's lots of different names of distributions. That's why we need to specify which one it is. So like B, if, if we were using binomial, we would use a B. Poisson, a P. T distribution, we'd use a T. Okay, so that's why it's important to write the letter, uh, or you can spell out the whole name as well. Okay, so on the normal distribution app of Staplet, there's two different operations. The first one is calculating an area under the normal curve. That's what we want first. That's a probability. The second one is calculating a value that corresponds to an area. So that's the inverse or the reverse reversing the input and output. So let's start with the first one. I'll show you both of them. Uh, stick with the first one, which is the default. Calculate an area under the normal curve. And then our inputs, so it's got the name normal. Our inputs are the mean and standard deviation. So we're going to put in our 40 for the mean, our 8 for the standard deviation, and plot the distribution. Okay, now you can check your numbers here or you could just get your numbers from Staplet because it puts the mean in the center and it goes out three standard deviations on each side, okay? This is the correct and standard way to label a normal curve. If you use, if you've ever used GeoGebra, you might notice that it does not label normal curves properly. So I wouldn't suggest copying and pasting from, from GeoGebra. If you've used that before, I'm not using it this term. Uh, partly for that reason. Okay, so we've got our beautiful normal curve here. You could copy this. If you click on, right click on it, uh, it doesn't say copy image, but you could take a little screenshot of that, right? And then this one doesn't have a place to type in the label, so you would, you would write or type your label underneath or above to label this graph, okay? Fortunately, it does, Staplet doesn't label these for us. Okay, so now we have four different options for calculating the area. So remember, area is probability. We can go between two values, to the left, to the right, or outside of a region. That would be like both tails outside. Between is inside two values, so those are like opposites of each other. Okay, so our first one is between, and it's between 30 to 50 inches. So I type in 30 for the left boundary, 50 for the right boundary, and calculate area. 
not great. Okay, so it gives me the area. So that is my probability of 0.7887. And if I click show labels on plot, then it will show me the definition statement. It doesn't have the X tilde, but I wish they had that on there. But um, maybe because it's that's going to vary depending on when we later you'll see that it won't always be X. So that's probably why they're not doing that. Um, but they are putting X equals 30 and X equals 50. And then they're showing the shading between those two numbers. And that's the area under that curve. That's um, 0.7887. So if you, if you have taken calculus, you can see how calculus is used for this, which is really cool. But you don't need to know calculus. Just like, I don't know how my car works, but I drive it and I, I love it. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't need to know how it works under the hood exactly. Have a rough idea. You don't have to know calculus to do statistics. Okay, so I, let me go back to the notes real quick. I wrote down our answer here. Now it didn't, some apps do show this, this notation, um, but just keep in mind, it goes from left to right. You take the smaller one, it points to the left, the less than or equal to, the variables in the middle, points to the left, less than or equal to 50. It never goes to the right, because we always, never these never point the other way, because we're always going from smaller to larger, smaller to larger. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's do less than 22 inches. So now I'm going to write that out. Probability, this is not a between, so I'm just going to have my x one time. x is less than 22. Less than 22. So now I go, now I don't have to start over, right? All I have to do is go to calculate the area. I've still got the same model. Now I'm going to go to the left of a value because less than is left on a number line. I'm going to type in 22, calculate area. And you'll notice it does give you the z-score as well, which is pretty cool. And yeah, it doesn't give us a probability statement. Um, but we do see shaded, the area to the left is 0 0.0122, and that's pretty small, so that makes sense, right? 0 0.0122. Okay, I could have shaded these on my paper as well. So let me go from 30 to 50. Let's see, it's approximate. 30 to 50. That was 0 0.7887. That was the pink one. And let me do the green one is less than or equal to 22. You can see that one's pretty small, 0, 1, 2, 2. Now when we did the simulations, the probability was counting the dots in here, right? It was counting how many times did we get that result or in this area, say in this left tail. How many times did we get a result, you know, below 22 um, in, in all of our samples and dividing by the total? So that's what we called an approximate probability. It's an empirical probability. This is called a theoretical probability because we're using a model. And so because we don't have dots to count, that's why we're using the area under the curve, okay? Okay, let's keep going now with greater than. So greater than probability, this is gonna be x greater than 65. Let's go to the applet. Again, I don't need to change my model because it's the same model. I don't need to redefine it until I change to a different model. So now I'm going to calculate an area to the right of a value. And we want 65. Click on Calculate Area. Okay, and remember, I still have this show labels checked, so it, it gives me little points to the arrow and shows me the probability on the normal curve itself. Now 65, you might notice, is over three standard deviations away. One, two, three. It's past 64. So it is very small, 0 0.0009. Okay, let me go back to the notes. I wrote in the 0 0.0009. And I will um, put 65 right there. So it's, it's super tiny, 0009. 
Okay, great. One more in this part. Greater than or equal to 65 inches. So you might notice that's really similar to D. Letter E is what's the probability that X is greater than or equal to 65? Okay, so how is that different? So greater than 65, right, is anything over 65, not including exactly 65. Greater than or equal to is saying 65 or more, right? So be careful, look, look at the wording to see which one it is, okay? But let's look at the app. Staplet, if I look at my possibilities for calculate an area, I have to the left, but I don't have an option to include it or not include it, right? I just have between, to the left, or to the right, okay? So that's because this is a continuous distribution, and so one single value doesn't make a difference. And let me show you that on the notes. It's actually the same exact value. And I'm going to write same value for a continuous distribution. Okay, now we've only done continuous, well, we have seen some discrete um, in our proportions where it, you could see distinct bars. In that case where there's nothing in between, that's different. But this continuous means there's any, between any two numbers, there's still another number, right? And that's a property of our decimal system called density. So between any two numbers, there's still another number. So if I tried to go, well, let's say I'm going to try to just cheat this and go um, 65.0, or this one would be greater than 65.01, right? And more. Well, what about 65.001? 0001, 0001. So there's always another number. Oops, sorry, that's my alarm going off, but we're almost done with this video. Um, I just want to make the point that there's no difference between having an equal sign or not mathematically, okay? There's a slight difference in the meaning in words, but in, in probability they have the same value, okay? So you can think of that as uh, on this pink example is a good a way to show it. So we had the on letter A, or sorry, letter B, between 30 to 50 inches, right? So we're finding the, this whole area, which you could think of as a bunch of like rectangles. It has to have width. The area has to have width. Here it's from 30 to 50. But think if I was just trying to go not include 50, less than 50, there's no rectangle, right? There's no, a single value doesn't have a, any width, so there's no area associated with that. So that's another reason why the equal and the greater than or equal to, and same thing on the less than side, the less than or less than or equal to, whether you have the equal or not doesn't change the probability mathematically, okay? Okay, great. Well, you get to practice some of those, and I'll see you in the next video.